What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a deck that nobody talks about. I haven't seen in so so long. This deck first came out way back in Maximum Crisis which was like five years ago at this point and no one's talked about this but Skill Drain just came off the ban list and because of that this deck is very much viable in today's format. If you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. Now I will say one thing just before we get into the profile. I do go a little in depth with this and this is just because this deck isn't really seen anywhere. It's not really talked about. So I did want to go a little bit more in depth with the card choices, with what the cards do. So if you guys are new to the deck, then you guys can get a little bit more of an understanding with this video. So that's all I want to say. I don't want to keep you guys for too long. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and with that, onto the deck profile. So just before we get into the profile, I do want to say that this deck is a deck that I feel like everyone forgot about. And I think it does some really funny things, especially when you go to a locals, you can catch a lot of people off guard with this deck. Because funny enough, once I get into it, you guys will understand a little bit more, especially if you're new to the deck. But funny enough, there's a lot of cards that in this deck where if your opponent doesn't have specific cards to out it, they'll have a very difficult time dealing with it. So it'll make sense when I get into it. So we are starting off with Triple Megalo Smasher X. And yes, you guys can see this is a deck with literally four monsters. Three Megalo Smasher X and just one Phantasm Spiral Dragon. Now, this is all you need for the deck. Most of these monsters can be recurred, but the reason you're also only playing four monsters is because this field spell, Pacifist, the Phantasm City. Now, this card is insanely, insanely powerful, and this is pretty much the card that makes this deck playable. So I'm going to read it out to you guys. I'll put it up on screen so you guys can read it as well, but this card is very important, and this is pretty much the center of all your plays, right? So this card's name is always treated as Yumi, whatever. You can normal summon or special summon, or you cannot, I should say, normal summon or special summon effect monsters that turn you activate this card's effect even if it leaves the field. Once per turn, if you normal summon or special summon exactly one normal monster and no other cards, you can add a Phantasm Spiral card from your deck to your hand. That's really important because once you guys see the trap cards specifically, the spell cards are important, but once you guys see the trap cards, you guys are gonna know why that's so, so important. And then if your opponent activates a card or effect, except during the damage step, you can and, and you control no tokens, you can special summon one Phantasm Spiral token. It's a worm type water level eight with 2000 attack and 2000 defense. So this pretty much puts monsters on the board for you. So that's what it kind of mitigates the only playing the four monsters. But these are literally just the best four monsters you do want to play for the deck. You only want to play one of the dragon because he's hard to summon. You really only summon him off of another card effect that I'll bring up. So yeah, so this is pretty much your monsters and of course your field spells, but your field spell gets you to monsters, which is very important. Then one terraforming, of course, to get to your field spell. We are playing double Phantasm Spiral Grip as well as one Phantasm Spiral Wave. Now these are equip spells and these equip spells are actually pretty important. So you usually search these off of the field spell if you don't draw into them. You don't really want to draw into them. That's why you're only playing the two and the one. So pretty much what grip is really important for is the monster you equip to, it equips to a normal monster and then it, it gains 500 attack. But when you destroy an opponent's monsters by battle, you can special summon a Phantasm Spiral Dragon from your hand, deck, or graveyard. So that's why you're only playing one of these because even if this gets destroyed somehow, you can summon it back from your graveyard as well. And this, most of the time, you're gonna be equipping to your Megalo Smasher. It's gonna be 2,500. And then Wave is also does the same thing. It's you can equip to a normal monster, but essentially when the monster would be destroyed by battle the first time, it doesn't get destroyed. And then this one is really good because if the equip monster battled, it doesn't have to necessarily destroy a monster by battle. It just, if it battles, you can special summon a Phantasm Spiral Dragon from your hand deck or graveyard. So same thing, it's really important in that sense. They both also share the effect where once you summon that Phantasm Spiral Dragon, the equip spells get moved to the Phantasm Spiral Dragon, which is really good because then you're boosting this guy up and he becomes kind of like a boss monster for you. So that's pretty much the Phantasm Spiral stuff. Once we get into the traps, the traps are where it gets really, really spicy. But again, that's how you're summoning this. You're summoning it with the equip spells and then you're going to be putting equip spells on him and then kind of making your Phantasm Spiral Dragon your boss monster of the deck. Then then we're playing this card and this is why this deck is anti-meta because the rest of this cards in the deck or the rest of the cards you guys are going to see are pretty much just to beat the meta this card's like a super super old card that essentially i feel like a lot of people don't know or haven't heard of so if you guys don't know what this card does is at the start of your main phase neither player can normal or special summon effect monsters until your next draw phase not a problem for you because all you're playing is normal monsters and tokens which is a normal monster essentially right so that's why heat wave start of your turn you can go first you activate your heat wave and then pretty much your opponent is not going to be able to normal or special summon effect monsters. So what are they going to be able to do like at that point? So this card is insanely, insanely good, especially a bunch against a bunch of the combo decks. If you think about PK Brave, if you think about Sword Soul, if you think about all the meta, they cannot play through. They literally cannot play through this unless they have a way to negate it. But if you're going first, I don't see a way to negate this card. So this card is insanely, insanely powerful. Then you have three Fossil Dig, of course, to search your Megalo Smasher X. So you want to do play the three Fossil Dig. Now, keep in mind, because we're playing such a small monster count, 
it is very important to be playing this fossil dig because that's the only way you really get into your monsters if you don't draw them so that's important then we're playing a bunch of draw cards we're playing triple pot of extravagance one upstar goblin and one card of demise now if you guys want to talk about extrav extrav can be a little bit pricey now if you guys want to swap that out and you guys don't have access to extravagance it's okay you can play pot of duality instead and that's really important because essentially you're not special summoning in this deck at all except for the token now when you're going first or and you set up a board or when you pot a duality on your turn most of the time your opponent is going to be activating a card effect on their turn and most of the time you're going to be summoning the token on their turn but there are situations where you activate a card and let's say your opponent ashes you or uses a hand trap. Your field spell will activate because you're just activating a card or effect. Essentially, that's why duality is not like the best best in the deck because sometimes there are situations where you can summon a token on your turn. But I will say that if you guys don't have extravagance, duality works fine. It's not going to make or break the deck essentially if you can only summon tokens on your opponent's turn. But the nice thing with extravagance is that you're able to have that flexibility, which can come up, right? Back to what I was saying, essentially extravagance can be replaced with duality, but you're playing one upstar and one card of demise as well. Card of demise doesn't work with extravagance because extravagance says you can't draw for the rest of the turn. But again, you want as much draw power as possible. And there's the chances are of you drawing extravagance and card of demise are very low anyway. So most of the time that's not going to happen. You'd rather play this card. This card's insanely powerful, of course, when you play so many trap cards. Then we're playing the three phantasm spiral battle as well as three phantasm spiral power so i'm going to tell you guys these card effects really really quick and these card effects are insanely powerful phantasm spiral battle is if all monsters you control are no monsters uh you can target one card your opponent controls destroy it but if umi is on the field and your field spell counts as umi then you can activate this from your hand so essentially you have a from hand you can just pop one and then if it's in the graveyard you can banish it and then target a normal monster you control and then you can equip the normal monster with all the equipped spells on the field at that time right so this is really good because in the battle phase let's say you have all your equipped cards on your phantasm spiral dragon you can attack with phantasm spiral activate this in the battle phase in your graveyard and then equip it all to megalo smasher and then you can attack with megalo smasher which is going to get the boosted 500 from like a grip for example right and then phantasm spiral power is also really important because this card has kind of a similar effect where if it's in the graveyard you can banish it to equip a phantasm spiral equip spell from your hand or graveyard to a normal monster and that's really important because essentially sometimes your grip or your wave will get sent to the graveyard this kind of recycles it puts it back for you so that's why this card is really good but on top of that the more important effect is if you control only normal monsters, you can target a monster your opponent controls, it loses a thousand attack and defense, and it has its effects negated until the end of the turn. So this is pretty much an impermanence for you, but it also brings down your opponent's monster's attack and defense. So that could be really good, especially when Megalo Smasher is your like, biggest monster with this. Like Phantasm Spiral is a really big monster at 29, plus the 500 it can get from Grip, but Megalo Smasher is pretty small, so minusing the 1000 could be really good and it helps you go for games sometimes so this card is insanely powerful searchable and perm pretty much then we're playing the card that pretty much makes this deck playable and that's triple skill drain skill drain is insanely powerful for this deck this is really the only reason why this deck is still playable in today's format because with skill drain essentially your monsters and your opponent's monsters just become beaters that's pretty much what the game comes down to who can beat each other over faster and, and who's stronger essentially right so with these cards with something like skill drain with the grip that boosts your monsters by 500 it's going to be a very hard time unless you're playing a random deck that also is playing only normal monsters your opponent is going to have a very hard time playing through this right so skill drain is very very important in this deck and it's the reason really this deck is playable again because three skill drain you have so much draw power in this deck you get to one of them you get to any of your other traps you get to a heat wave you get to your monster you get to your field spell your boom you're, you're winning that game your, your opponent is going to have a very very difficult time to play through this also i will say there is a way in this deck to protect your skill drain so if you're worried about something like lightning storm or twin twister you have protection i'm going to show you guys that in just a minute the next blood gate we're also playing is just goes a match goes match is really good all your monsters are water your token's going to be also water so goes match is also really powerful now this is the card that i want to talk about sea stealth attack this card is insanely powerful for this deck and this is how you protect your goes a match it's how you protect your skill drain this is how you protect your field spell this is insanely insanely powerful so when this card is activated you can activate a yumi from your hand or your graveyard so essentially if your phantasm your pacifist gets sent to the graveyard you don't have another one this card essentially can activate it back for you which is really really powerful but the most important effects are this so once per turn you can banish a water monster you control that includes a token until the end phase face up spells and traps you control cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects so what that means is if you have a skill drain face up if you have a goes and match face up and your opponent wants to go twin twister or, or or lightning storm you know what i mean or harpy's feather duster as well you can pretty much banish a token, banish one of your Megalo Smashers, and then essentially protect all your face-up spells and trap cards. So it makes your floodgates 
undestructible, if that makes sense. So it protects them. Imagine a deck that can protect the skill drain, because the only out really to skill drain is back row removal. But now you can't even use back row removal against the skill drain. This card is insanely, insanely powerful. Now I will say Cosmic Cyclone does out it, because essentially this card only stops them from being destroyed by card effects. So Cyclone can still out your skill drain and whatnot, but stuff like Twin Twister, Lightning Storm, and other cards like that, they won't be able to destroy your spells and traps. Your, your higher piece Feather Duster won't be able to destroy your spells and traps. The second effect is pretty much what is really cool because it also makes your normal monsters and your tokens pretty much like boss monsters. So at the start of the damage step, if a water monster you control whose original level is five or higher, aka your Spiral Dragon, but your tokens are also level eight, so it works for your tokens as well. So if they're level five or higher, and it battles an opponent's monster, you destroy that opponent's monster. So pretty much automatically, if your opponent has a monster that's bigger than yours, you don't have to worry because your token can attack into it even with less attack and it automatically destroy that monster. Now, what's really cool about this effect is it says if your monster battles, it doesn't have to be you attacking into your opponent. So that also means that if your opponent is attacking into your monster, they will automatically have their monster destroyed by battle. So now your normal monsters, your tokens, your Phantasm Spiral Dragon are protected from battle. So they're protected from battle. They're also most of the time going to be protected from card effects just because you have cards like Skill Drain, cards like Heat Waves. So your opponent's not going to be able to summon effect monsters. And then Skill Drain is going to make it so that effect monsters can't activate their effects. So essentially, there's no monster able to remove this card. And then there's no monster really being able to attack over these cards. So that's what makes it insanely, insanely powerful. Your opponent has to have very specific outs to kind of break these kind of boards. So that's why this is really good. And then obviously we're playing Triple Storm Strike. Storm Strike is good going first and going second. So yeah, this is pretty much self-explanatory. Then for the extra deck, the extra deck is really generic. Whatever you guys want to play, I'm playing Extravagance. So your extra deck, you never really go into that much. So you can play Triple Mistar Boy, uh, Double Dweller, Double Bahamut Shark, Double Totally Awesome. You guys technically can make Bahamut Shark with two of the Megalo Smashers, but I will say that that doesn't come up too often only because again, you're playing stuff like Skill Drain. And once you have a Skill Drain already face up on the board, there's like no point in summoning Bahamut Shark totally. Like, you know, that's not really happening, but they're just options for you, especially if you don't see your Skill Drain or somehow your opponent outs your Skill Drain through all this protection. Then yeah, you have Bahamut Shark, you have Toad, just another option. You have Logia, you have Dolka as well. Your Megalo Smasher X are dinosaurs, so pretty much you can make monster negates, you can make spell negates with Logia. Then you're just playing some toolbox like Tornado Dragon, Beluska. Your extra deck doesn't really matter. You never really go into it. But uh, yeah, this main deck is insane. This deck can do some really spicy things. It catches a lot of people off guard. And I'm telling you, especially with the Sea Stealth attack, if your opponent doesn't have very specific outs to the cards, it makes it very difficult for them. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Now I will say this is still very much a rogue deck. However, in testing, you can catch a lot of people off guard with this deck, especially with skill drain back at three now. And if people don't know exactly what this deck does, when they see a token with the C stealth attack, they might not understand how actually good that is. And not a lot of people will actually have very specific outs to those kind of locks with like the C stealth attack with the monster or the token or a skill drain or goes in, you know what I mean? So it makes this deck very, very powerful, very, very underrated. And I think you guys should try it out in today's format. So thank you guys all for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy it. That's Mako signing out. Peace.